Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here. And today's talk is going to be on your thyroid, essentially just giving you a foundational um, understanding of how your thyroid works. I really love this slide here because these are all the undiagnosed uh, or the people that are being treated today that still have thyroid symptoms. And our goal is to try to liberate as many people as possible to the land of healthy thyroid function. And what that means is being able to lose those unwanted pounds, to be able to have better circulation, better energy, better focus, to feel warm again, uh, and also to have regular bowel movements too, to not be all constipated and backed up. And those are all common symptoms of thyroid imbalances. And let's just face it, for 80% of the people, a prescription of Synthroid is not going to fix the problem. And if these problems are left undiagnosed and untreated from a functional medicine perspective, problems always tend to get worse and more expensive uh, the longer they're left untreated. So again, we're trying to break away from the old way pattern of health, the old uh, symptoms and conditions, and we want to get you into a place where you're having better health, freeing yourself from the barriers um, that are holding you back. So to give you an understanding how your thyroid works, the first domino that has to fall in thyroid function is actually your pituitary gland. Your pituitary, located in your brain, actually produces a hormone called TSH. TSH then basically yells down to your thyroid gland, hey, make some T4. Right? T4 is inactive thyroid hormone. It's really important, but T4 is not active. So most of the medications out there that are given by physicians are is is stored form or an activated thyroid hormone and it's also synthetic so it's not necessarily the best for your body I'm always a big fan if you're gonna use thyroid hormone it's always better to use bioidentical thyroid hormone we got into a similar problem when we use synthetic hormones with Premarin and Provera in the early 2000s for female hormone issues and we saw a rise in heart disease and cancer issues so I'm always a big fan of using what the body recognizes as normal so this T4 hormone is inactivated. So it actually gets activated throughout the body. It gets activated in the liver. It gets activated in the intestines. And if our body is too stressed out and our adrenals are fatigued, it will actually take 20% of that T3 and convert it into reverse T3. And reverse T3 is like the break. It slows your thyroid down. It prevents that T3 hormone from being able to bind into a receptor site. So in the next few slides, I'm going to show you how thyroid hormone works. And just remember that, that reverse T3 actually plugs up that receptor site. So reviewing things here, the first domino that falls is the brain, which makes TSH. TSH then yells to the thyroid. Thyroid then converts T4, which is inactivated. T4 gets converted to T3 in a couple different places. And T3 is active thyroid hormone. And you can see if we have liver problems or toxicity issues or um, digestive problems, that we're going to have all kinds of problems converting thyroid hormone. And many people have these problems and giving a medication is not going to solve it. And it's also important to note um, that TSH is also very inadequate when we're looking at thyroid function. It makes more sense to look at the end products of our hormones and not just TSH. And as you can see here, there are many different causes of these issues. We can have pituitary issues, thyroid stress, whether it's autoimmune, uh, nutritional deficiencies, and we can have all kinds of things in regards to inflammation and liver and high stress issues as well. So just a couple of little tidbits over here. But moving forward, we can see our TSH or our brain stimulates our thyroid to make T4. T4 is inactive, meaning it's not going to have a metabolic effect on the body. T4 then gets converted to T3, which is our active thyroid hormone. And throughout this process, certain things need to happen. The main enzyme that facilitates this conversion is 5-deadenase. It's actually a selenium-based enzyme. And as you can see, all these different issues can affect that enzyme. So we have selenium up there, right? If we have nutritionally deficient in selenium, which is very possible these days with our bad food supply and such, that can affect thyroid conversion. Um, cortisol, anemia, heavy metals, lower progesterone function, decreased protein, so malabsorption issues, gut issues, blood sugar problems. So all of these things can affect conversion of inactive thyroid hormone to active thyroid hormone. And with conventional medicine, just giving Synthroid or synthetic T4, I'd say about 80% of my patients have a difficult time making this conversion. So when we look at their labs, they're going to have higher or high to normal levels of T4. And then when we look at their T3 levels, their T3 starts to drop out a little bit. 
So this conversion issue is, is really a big problem. And then what happens as well, we start seeing slow metabolism because the adrenals are really stressed. Your adrenals sit on the back of your kidneys and they manage stress. They manage your blood sugar and they manage inflammation. And your adrenals will actually convert more of your thyroid hormone into reverse T3. RT3 for short, and that's also inactivated. So as you can see, we have T4, which is inactive. We have all these stressors that affect the conversion. So we may have lower amounts of T3, and then we're also going to have increased amounts of reverse T3. So what we're getting here is less and less and less thyroid hormone that's active and more and more inactive thyroid hormone, which becomes a problem. And again, most doctors aren't testing it correctly. This is something I see in my office every day, and it just drives me crazy. But conventional doctors and even a lot of naturopathic doctors are still using a lot of TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone tests to assess thyroid function. Uh, the biggest problem is if you go back to my previous videos on thyroid and autoimmunity, I'll put a link in the, beneath the, the video here, is that TSH can fluctuate especially when we're having an autoimmune condition because autoimmune conditions will create inflammation and will spill out more thyroid hormone into the body and thyroid hormone will tell TSH to go high or low. So your TSH can drop or elevate over time. So it will fluctuate and as the autoimmune condition gets worse because 90% of thyroid issues are autoimmune, what's going to happen is your TSH will start elevating and elevating and elevating. So what the problem with this is, is that thyroid conditions, if you're only using TSH, aren't going to be diagnosed until you're above this line, so to speak. So we're, until we're that 4.5 to 5.0 range on our lab test, we're going to go undiagnosed. The problem is this condition takes probably about a decade to occur. So what that means is that you've been sick, this disease has been progressing for a long period of time, and we're using faulty tests that aren't sensitive enough to figure this thing out earlier. And even the British Medical Journal came out with a study back in 2002 showing that TSH is not the best marker to use to assess thyroid replacement. And this is from the, the British Medical Journal, and this came out almost 10 years ago. So doctors really are just behind the times in regards to thyroid health and most other things in, in uh, conventional medicine world. So the big issue is conventional medicine is using thyroid tests that are, are old and, and somewhat antiquated, and it takes years for people to even be detected in these tests. So the time you finally come out here where you're starting to test positive for thyroid issues, well, we could have diagnosed you almost 10 years earlier, and we could be working on this to help address the underlying cause so this end result never happens. So my goal is to work with patients in this area and to help reverse things and get you back on the right track. Uh, for more information on getting your thyroid test or assessed, feel free and visit the information um, area below the video, and feel free and sign up for my free thyroid video series as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great day.